Kyle, how you been? Good. Real good. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we can go down a couple things that uh, people know you for, but I'd rather talk about music. Sure. And uh, the song that you're going to play for us today in the Airstream, uh, you said it was a life changer. And as a songwriter, tell me when you started songwriting, did it live up to everything you thought it was going to be when you finally had your first number one? I mean, it's just huge, right? Um, I mean, you know, as a songwriter, you just, you know, you're you're just writing just for your heart and just, you know, just kind of putting your heart into a song. And um, more than memory came around, um, and I'll, I'll tell you the story behind it. It was, I write with Lee Bryce all the time, and um, he's a great artist, but even more than an artist, he's a phenomenal songwriter. But when we first started out, we, we'd probably written about 150 songs together, and uh, he would not stop talking about this one girl. And it was the first love of his life, and he could not stop talking about her. Every every single time we wrote a song, he's like, "Well, you know, there's this girl," and and uh, and uh, anyway, he just it got so consistent. He finally got to a point where he's like, "I cannot stop thinking about her. I cannot stop talking about her. It's like she's more than a memory." And we both looked at each other. I'm like, "Buddy, that's a song." So uh, we rounded up uh, Mr. Billy Montana, who's amazing, an incredible songwriter. Uh, Suds in the Bucket, Bring on the Rain, Hard to Love, um, phenomenal songwriter. And uh, we ended up writing that together. And um, man, it just it changed our lives. It was, you know, the first song that debuted at number one on, on country radio. And, and uh, thank you to Garth Brooks and Scott Pachetta. And uh, it just was, it was awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. And uh, I can't remember if you said it. It's the first song ever to what? Debut at number one. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. Can you imagine? I mean, that's, one of your songs history. debuted at number one on all of his music, and he's had a bunch of them. Yeah, so you're one of them, right? So, in other words, it's it's all downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> you're the third wheel of Huggin' Lily, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Uh, so, you've been down here quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, we love actually coming down to 30A. Um, we have been to Rosemary Beach probably, gosh, I don't know. Phew. Probably in the past 11 years, we've probably been out, down here 40 times. Wow. We come down here to get away from Music Row, because um, it gets a little stale on Music Ooh. Row, writing songs. And you come down here, and you you can write a song in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Mm -hmm. Take a break, go out to the beach, get in the water, and all of a sudden you're inspired to write another song. We will literally write for four days, and we'll come out with about 15 songs. Wow. wow. And uh, some of our favorite songs we've ever written have been here. Some of your songs uh, have done really well. Can you talk about some of the other songs that you've just been part of or uh, have put out there? There's a couple guys out there that you've yeah been of other than Garth. That's well, absolutely, absolutely. Cancel. Well, there's been a lot of Lee Bryce cuts that yeah. have happened here at 38. Um, uh, a song called Hard to Love. Um, there's a song called a Rumor, which is going to be on his new album, um, which just might be the next single, which nice. would be really cool. Um, there's a song that's really special to me and Lee Bryce and a guy named Joe Leathers. Um, that's called Still. And uh, Still was cut by Tim McGraw. It was a single. And Still was written because of the beach here at 38. Put you on the spot. Well, can you play a little hook? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place I like to go where I can hear the cotton grow. Midnight train whistles blow. Dozen miles down the road, and all I really got to do is just be still. That's your hook. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get him to play more. You gotta make noise for him. <laughs> so that was cut by Tim yeah. Grubb, but that was that was written because of this beach. Because when we go out there and we sit on that white sand and we, we stare across that ocean, you can't help but be still. And uh, there's just something so ominous about it, and uh, and it's, it's it's hard to not believe in a god when you look at that. That's right. Uh, amen. Really nice. uh, what's your favorite part about being on 30 aside from this working? Like, what do you like doing when you're here? Nothing, or do you do things when you're out here? Do you go paddleboarding? Is there stuff that Kyle likes to do? Uh, honestly, when we're here, we cannot help but write our faces off. Seriously, it is <laughs> it is so inspiring. That's yeah. I mean, that's what this place is to us. It's. It's just uh, songs just come for days here, and 
man, I, I mean, I'm thinking about moving down here with my beautiful wife, Kelly, and, and uh, who? maybe we could write another record or something. I mean, see what happens. I'm not familiar with Kelly. Who is she? Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> uh, then my next question is, if you, if you Google Kyle Jacobs, what comes up first? Kelly Pickler. <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Pickler. Mr. Pickler? Yeah, I get that a lot. Or Kelly in a photo, like a, on the red carpet somewhere with this guy. Yeah, <laughs> which is me. <laughs> that's funny. That's, uh, that's let's let's go ahead and bring up the I Love Kelly Pickler show. Sure. Hugely successful with my kids. Yeah. My kids love it. Really? Love it. Well, love how about it. that? And uh, I believe last season there was something on your fridge that we also want to thank you, but we learned the origins of it. Yeah. Uh, it might have been his fault. But it was a 38 sticker or a magnet on your fridge. Well, I'm just telling you what. I mean, <laughs> we love 38, and I love Kelly Pickler, and a, a lot of people do. And we're so thankful that the show was successful, and uh, we're going to keep doing it as long as we possibly can. But um, I love 38 so much. My soul is on that beach, and that is where I thought would be the perfect spot to ask my beautiful wife to marry me. And uh, I'm glad she said yes. And uh, the sun was going down, and the waves were perfect, and nice. the weather was awesome, and, and uh, yeah. I'm about to sing a song called More Than a Memory that was cut by Garth Brooks. This song absolutely changed my life. Um, I don't know how it happened, but somehow it was the first song in the history of country music that debuted at number one. And uh, it changed Woo. my life and changed Billy Montana's life and Lee Bryce's life as well. And I'm no Garth Brooks, but I'll give it the best I got. People say she's on in my head It's gonna take time, but I forget They say I need to get on with my life But they don't realize It's when you're dialing six numbers just to hang up the phone Driving across town just to see if she's home Waking a friend in the dead of the night Just to even say it'll be alright You find the things to do to not fall asleep So you know she'll be there in your dreams That's when she's oh. Everything she ever wrote Watched every word go up and smoke To all the pictures off the wall That ain't helping me at all Cause when you're talking out loud Nothing but air You look like hell You just don't care You're drinking more than you ever drank Sinking down lower than you ever sank You find yourself falling down on your knees Shaking your fist Begging please That's when she's Born in a memory Driving across town just to 